Bo-Katan's character arc is tricky to pinpoint and it's left many fans wondering just what her plan is. Settling guys because I've got not one but two theories today. Did you see anything alive? And unfortunately one of them is slightly darker. We'll start by mapping him out and then we'll get on to where these theories take us at the end of the season because they both end up in pretty similar places and which theory I think is most likely. If you've been following along with the latest Mandalorian news you'll already know that season 4 is definitely on the way and it's already been written. So I think it's a safe bet to say Din Djarin is sticking around for the time being. Therefore none of these theories result in his immediate death. Now first off let's take it back to the beginning where Bo first had the encounter and I think she could be unsure of what she's just witnessed. Now of course it did look like a mythosaur, it had the distinctive features of a mythosaur but this is a creature thought to be long extinct and she would be well aware of the stories told in legend of the mythosaur rising up to herald a new age of Mandalore so she understands the significance of if what she saw turns out to be true. I'd kind of liken this moment to that of one of us winning a lottery and having to double check the ticket because we just can't believe it. So I think Bo-Katan, even though she saw the mythosaur, she's just in disbelief. And maybe she's going through situations in her mind which would make her think she saw a mythosaur. Perhaps the rate that she was ascending to the surface might have had some kind of physical effect on her. Now, we'll have to see how that plans out. But at the moment, I think Bo isn't 100% convinced that she knows what she saw down there. I think she has an idea, but she goes to Din Djarin to ask him. She looks for validation. Of course, she doesn't get that. I think she's not going to come out straight away and say she saw a mythosaur because she will sound like a crazy person in this day and age when the mythosaurs are long extinct. It's like going down the road and just saying that you saw a T-Rex. People would look at you like you're a little bit funny. But perhaps Din Djarin is also going through the same situation. Perhaps he did see something, but he's not 100% sure himself. And he was kind of out of it on his way to the surface as well. But if what Bo saw turns out to be true, then this would be hugely significant in her efforts to retake Mandalore. Now I think this would cause internal conflict from what Bo believes now at this point in time and what she was raised to believe as a child on Mandalore which she now refers to as children's stories which she thinks that's adorable that Din still believes. But now she's seen or she thinks she could have seen a mythosaur down there then this would lead her to question what she currently believes. Now you have to wonder, well, if the Mandalorians are on the planet for a long time after the Mythosaurs went extinct, then why wasn't one spotted until now? And this is probably playing a part in Bo's doubts and if she's seen it or not. Well, I think that is kind of explained during the episode. She does say the mines never used to be that deep. The living waters never used to be deep when Din says he didn't anticipate it and he fell off into the depths. And she puts it down to the bombs causing seismic activity, which is effectively earthquakes, which has opened up the bottom of the pit. Now, this is where the mythosaurs come from. Obviously, the mythosaurs were under the crust of the planet, and with the pit opening up, the mythosaurs came through, or the mythosaur, depending on how many there are. So they've been there the whole time, they've just been hiding under the planet effectively. Now, with all of this going on in Bo's mind, she then has to go through her castle being blown up, her home, as she calls it. Her forces are already melted away, and at this point in time, she's homeless, She's got no one around her apart from Din Djarin. She's all alone. Now this is where it comes in handy being a Mandalorian other than all the cool armor and the other bits you get with it. But it's that Mandalorians are stronger in numbers and this is something we've heard Bo-Katan say before. She very well knows that. Our enemies want to separate us, but Mandalorians are stronger together. And at the moment she's on her own. Now she goes with Din to Din's sect for safety away from the Imperial Remnants and she's accepted in. She's bathed in the living water, she's not removed her helmet since, she's just as redeemed now as Din Djarin is. And she even makes clear that she doesn't walk the way. I think this tells us that she isn't planning to deceive him because if she is, and this was all part of her plan, then she would just go along with the whole thing of, you know, I'll never take off my helmet again and the rest of it just to go back on her word. Why would she say that otherwise? Why would she make it harder for herself if she's looking to deceive them in any way? You know, going along with the whole idea would bring less of a risk of being discovered if she is truly looking to do one over on them and use them for her own gains, potentially. She sees the Mythosaur signet on the wall and that acts as a reminder to us, the audience, but also to Bo, that she's here now. She's part of Din's sect you know, following the old ways of the Mandalore, supposedly. But she's still thinking about the whole experience she just had with what could be a Mythosaur. Perhaps at the moment in time, Bo is more open to Din sect and their beliefs due to what she thinks she saw. They also followed the way of the Mandalore, which of course comes with the stories of a Mythosaur rising up one day to herald a new age of Mandalore. And Bo potentially has just witnessed part of that. So maybe she could be softening her stance on what Din's people believe. And this could all tie in nicely to a united Mandalore later on in the season. But I believe that she plans to return to Mandalore alone to confirm what she saw, but also with the legend of the Mythosaur, 
mythosaur in her mind so she's looking at it from a technical perspective well if there's a mythosaur down there it's managed to survive that's great it's going to be good for mandalorian people coming back together but she'll also have in mind you know the legends someone being able to tame the mythosaur to ride the mythosaur to bring forth a new age of mandalore and she'll also have in mind that that could be her she's always wanted to rule mandalore and now she hasn't got the dark saber this would be a better way to go around it she could be the one to bring the mythosaur to the surface to show that she has some kind of control over it then she would be the one who would be leading mandalore into a bright future but of course her plans are now delayed because of the empire being involved with the story we had a big section on coruscant with dr pershing really adding context to what is going to come in later episodes i think we had the interceptors on kalevala and it's important to note of the amount of interceptors we see in that scene Bo herself says there's too many interceptors for a warlord and they aren't just in a random place in the galaxy they're on kalevala which of course is in the mandalore system now that tells us they have eyes on the planet and perhaps the reason being is because they know of how much of a threat a united mandalore poses hence the lies have gone round about the planet being cursed in a bid to keep him in exile now i think the mandalorians will return to mandalore in greater numbers not just bow not just one or two but all of din's sects maybe some of bow's crew and other sects as well which will come in that we've yet to see and after learning din and bow have already been there it's safe to do so they'll make their way over in an attempt to perhaps recolonize the planet or perhaps just to see if it's true themselves before they take any further action. Now, this is the point where I think they're going to be ambushed by the Imperials. You know, we know they're floating around in the system somewhere, and if they see these ships go into Mandalore, then that's their chance to catch them off guard and take them out before they've had chance to rebuild anything. And I think we'll get to a point where the kind of the battle is being lost, the Empire is winning against the Mandalorians, being more prepared, better equipped. The Mandalorians just went there to see if their home was livable again and if they could go back. And this is where Bo brings out the big gun, the Mythosaur. There's a real chance here that despite a lot of people assuming Bo has a grand plan for all of it, because that's the type of character she typically has been, that she doesn't. And this reveal could be so out of the blue for her, so unbelievable, that it's completely caught her off guard, that she kind of is trying to formulate a way to go around it and a way to get to the bottom of what's going on, but she doesn't quite get there with the state of the play at the moment, with the Empire being involved again, losing her home and still hanging around with Din. All of these run planned events. And to be honest with you, it couldn't have come at a worse time when she's trying to find out the truth behind what she's seen. She could have a light plan, like mentioned here but nothing really grand nothing really set in stone at this point just kind of a loose idea and outline i believe Bo spending time with din's group and din's group spending time with her and other mandos not wearing helmets will help them reach a common ground in their way of understanding how to be a mandalorian and i think the way of the mandalore will be amended to helmets being optional you can wear them if you want to but it's not the be all and end all now of course this theory does all change if Bo is sure in herself that what she saw is actually a mythosaur. The events, I think, will largely stay the same. We've seen a large chunk of them play out in episode three already, where she goes and joins Din's sect. He's one of them. Dink, one of what? But her intentions, of course, will be different. And it turns out that she wasn't looking for validation from Din Djarin, but rather to ensure he didn't see it. Din Djarin has been someone who's kind of got in Bo's way. You know, he took the Darksaber from Moff Gideon after defeating him. That massively messed up Bo's plans. Maybe she doesn't want to run the risk of Din Djarin messing him up again. And she might be aware of the fact that Din Djarin was the first into the Living Waters. He was the first to encounter it. Technically, he discovered the Mythosaur, although he doesn't realize it at this point in time, or so we think. And if Din's unaware of the Mythosaur, then he's not in a picture to tame it. He's not in a picture to have any kind of control over it or to bring that reveal to the other Mandalorians. She wants to take the throne still and this would be her ideal opportunity to do that without defeating Din in battle. Going to Din's sect I think is still relevant in this version of events but never part of the plan. She's still alone at this point in time and you know as I mentioned earlier Mandalorians are always stronger together. Her intentions though aren't to fight or divide the people even more. It's to unite Mandalore so it's important that she gets on the good side of not just her idea of a mandalorian but the other factions that have splintered away since as well now Bo and the sect will still learn a great deal from each other i think and i think there still will be a common ground on where you can wear helmets if you want but you don't have to it's not mandatory for all of them and this is where the empire ambushes on mandalore and you know i think it will largely go the same way where she brings out the big gun and everyone's unaware of it at this time it's a big reveal at the end of the season i can really see it being and maybe even she takes grogu down there to use beast control 
maybe because she wasn't the one to discover the Mythosaur. And Din Djarin really is the one that is meant to tame it, but he doesn't. Maybe she takes Grodu now there. Maybe she knows he can do beast control. Perhaps if she sees him do the ability before the season ends. Now I'm interested to know if her plan pays off, will she be the one to control the Mythosaur? I think it's a fair shout at the moment between Din Djarin and Bo-Katan. Obviously having the Mythosaur would be much more significant to Bo than it would Din, so it makes sense for it to go to her in my opinion. Or could it be someone else completely different? I mean, that's also not out of question either. Now, a question I have as well. If, for uh, whatever reason, Din or another leader from a different sect find out about the Mythosaur as well, will she look to remove them so they're not in her way? Or is she going to let it be a united effort and do it really for the team? And if it ends up being her, then great. But if not, then great. Mandalore's United and the people are back together again. My take personally is she doesn't know what she's really seen down there. She thinks it's a Mythosaur, but she's not 100% sure. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from her at the moment after the encounter. I think there's definitely big reveals on the way this season. Remember to subscribe if you're new, leave a like, and let me know what you think Bo's planning down below in the comments. I'll catch you in the next one, and remember this is the way.